Hey, what's up everybody? It's the Comedic African, and I just wanted to do a short video uh, today talking about agriculture, and specifically uh, permaculture. And so that's something that I'm really passionate about. Um, as some of you may know, I do have some land in the States, and you know, I have some land here in Rwanda, and uh, I plan on doing some agro business. And, um, you know, I really love agriculture and uh, permaculture is really one of the things that I'm kind of into. But um, most people don't really know what permaculture is, especially in our community. Um, and I've been getting a lot of questions from people that, you know, want to do agriculture and they know I'm kind of into it. And, you know, so they kind of ask, you know, like, what, what should we do on our land? And so me, myself, um, you know, I have a small permaculture food forest on my land in the States, along with just uh, annual crops that I'm growing over there. But, you know, this year I was been in Africa uh, since December, so I didn't really grow anything on my land, you know, on the, on the crop side this year, simply because, you know, there was no one there to, to handle it and maintain it. But one of the things that I am happy about is on my permaculture food forest side, there's, you know, stuff growing there, um, you know, all year. I don't even have to be there. And that's some of the beauties of it, because it's really using the principles of nature to grow food. So, you know, if you look at traditional agriculture, at least in the West, you know, they pretty much have a tractor and they till the land and they plant one crop on all the land. So you can have like thousands of acres of all corn or thousands of acres of all soybeans. And, you know, I guess that's good if, uh, you know, it's good for one person on a tractor can plant, harvest, and, you know, operate just, uh, you know, with low overhead because it's just one person on a tractor. But it's really not good for the soil and it's not good for the environment. And so it requires a lot of inputs, as in chemical fertilizers and pesticides. And that's because if you just destroy the cover on the land by tilling and expose the soil, you have a lot of problems with erosion. And so when it rains, the water just runs off because there's nothing to keep it in place. You know, also, if you're planting just one crop on thousands of acres, whatever pest likes that crop is just going to have a have a field day on your you know on your land because you know they can just grow and multiply and there's so much food everywhere and there are no predators for that pest because that environment is specifically um conducive for that for that pest and um <clears throat> and so you know that's why you have to use all these uh chemi chemical pesticides and they just spray everything just to kill the pest but then that runs off in the water and, you know, it, it harms the environment and can harm other beneficial insects as well. And so that's what they call a monoculture. It's just one thing growing and it's really just not really the way to go. Um, and so permaculture, uh, it's just a, it's a science it's a lot of things going on with it, with different permaculture principles. Maybe, we'll, you know, we'll do a video in the future talking more in depth about that. But um, just for a general overview, um, there's one concept in permaculture that is the food forest. And a food forest basically is growing food and, you know, medicinal herbs and things that we use and can harvest, but in the forest-like setting. And so if you think of a forest, you know, you never look at a forest and it's just all one kind of tree, just spaced out, just all growing with bare earth. No, I mean, that's maybe in an orchard <laughs> you're thinking, but that's not what a forest is. In a forest, you'll have all different types of species all living together in harmony, including plant species and animal species. So, you know, in a forest, you'll have some tall trees, you know, that would be the high tree canopy. And then you have some shorter trees that'll kind of fill in the spaces in between. And then you'll have shrubs that are even lower. And then you have an herbaceous layer of, um, of different grasses and other plants that are just growing on the ground, covering the earth. And you'll also have vines that'll be growing up 
through the trees and then you have things that even live on the ground like various tubers and you know other uh plants that um you know that that are mostly underground like potatoes or you know other types of uh you know tuber or ground uh vegetables and so um you know all these things growing together in a forest along with the animals along with all different types of insect populations and it kind of balances out in an equilibrium so you know if you have a pest that is a pest for one particular uh, tree the predator of that pest might be able to live in a tree that's right next to it <laughs> you know so that keeps down the the predator or, or the pest for that particular tree so there's not just one environment that you know everything can just grow and multiply and just feast on without having any types of predators and so um in the permaculture food forest you're using that concept to build you know, or to grow um you know different food and to, and to build a ecosystem of food crops or medicinal herbs or you know other um, plants that we that are beneficial to us and beneficial to each other so for example on, on my land in illinois you know i have a lot of uh fruit trees and so the, the fruit trees are the main species and around the fruit trees i'll plant uh, various uh, bushes that you know can commingle and live with the trees and so the trees you know might have depending on, on the tree you know uh, like apple trees for example they'll have a root system that doesn't necessarily go really deep you know it kind of spreads out and that's why you don't really want to have grass around your your fruit trees like that because it will compete with grass on um uh, you know, for, for nutrients coming from the soil. Uh, so you can grow other things, though, that have a deeper tap root. And so, you know, you can grow like comfrey or even raspberries and other types of, of shrubs, or berry uh, bushes that will go down deeper. And so they're not really competing with your trees. And then those things also keep the weeds away. And um, so the, the concept is to grow a lot of different things in the same space that don't really compete with each other and that you can get a harvest from. And, you know, doing that, there will be some type of competition. So, you know, if, if you uh, grow a bunch of stuff together, it, you might have a slightly lower yield on your fruit trees than you would if the fruit tree was just there by itself with nothing around but you also get additional yield from these other plants that are sharing that space. And, you know, instead of having to weed all the time to keep the competition down from the weeds, you're replacing the weeds with other plants that you actually use. Because anybody who's gardened before, I mean, if you open the soil, something's gonna grow. Uh, there's no such thing as just the soil just being open unless it's just a barren area. But if the soil is fertile, some seeds will fly in, they'll be seeds in the soil. And, you know, that's just nature's way of protecting it, protecting itself because it doesn't want the, uh, the land to be bare. Because, you know, like I said, that causes problems with erosion. It's kind of like your skin. Uh, you know, the vegetation layer on the earth is kind of like the skin on your body. You know, if you scrape yourself, you're going to grow a scab to protect uh, your your flesh uh, and that's the same thing that nature does you know if you take away the the vegetation on the soil something else is going to grow because it wants to protect itself um, <clears throat> and so you want to use those principles in your favor and instead of trying to fight nature you want to work with nature and that's really the concept of permaculture so um, you know we'll probably talk more about these topics and I'll actually take you out in the field so you can kind of see what I'm doing on my land. Um, I recently bought a few pieces of land here in Rwanda and, you know, I plan on using some of these principles, um, you know, there. And so, you know, I just wanted to give a brief overview of permaculture. If you have any questions, um, you can put them in the comments or you can reach me on my uh, Instagram. That's probably the easiest way to contact me. 
If you're interested in agriculture or want to learn more about permaculture, just hit me up on Instagram. It's the The Comedic African on Instagram. Or you can leave a comment down below. So, you know, thanks for watching. Um, I'm going to try to be bringing videos more regularly. You know, I've just been busy. I have so many things going on. But uh, I do want to take some time to kind of share my thoughts and, uh, you know, keep everyone posted about what, you know, I'm trying to do here. Because I got a lot of friends and family in the States that, you know, are asking, oh, what's going on? And, you know, they know I have the YouTube channel and they're like, oh, where are the videos? I haven't seen you in a while. So I'm going to try to be a little more regular here. But, you know, thanks for watching. You guys take care and uh, be blessed. Peace.